AOZ Studio. Let's break the code. Hello and welcome to this AOZ tutorial. To those who are joining us for the first time, AOZ Studio is a next generation language which you can use to program pretty much anything, even if you don't know how to code. It's really easy to use, anyone can do it. You can create an app, a game and more, and it is completely free to use, so there is no excuse. Today, we will be comparing a game written in Python and the same game made in AOZ to show you the fun possibilities that AOZ brings and to help you decide which programming language to choose when you make a game. And this is the first video from a brand new series in which I will be recreating programs made in other languages in AOZ Studio and comparing them. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell button for the latest AOZ content. The game we are looking at right now is written in 130 lines of Python. We are going to see that in AOZ Studio, the same game is written in only 20 lines. 20 lines only! Yes, that's right, only 20 lines of code. Not only that, but AOZ also includes a real database with which I can save and read variables to set the score. Let me tell you, this code is so simple, it looks like my grandma's shopping list. You might be thinking, that seems too simple. Where's the trick? But I assure you, there isn't. AOZ is designed to be very easy to learn and use, even for beginners who have no programming experience. And I would like to congratulate Clear Coder, the author of the three hour, 45 minute tutorial to create this game in Python. His video is very educational and well made, and you can find the link to it in the description underneath this video. Okay, let's start with another look at the Python version of this game, written with the Pygame library. The game is called Pixel Runner. It has music, sounds, a sky and the ground, and there are enemies on the screen that the player needs to avoid. The player can control a character that runs and jumps using the keyboard. I really want to show you how much more comfortable and easy it is to work with AOZ, so let's have a quick look at both codes side by side. The Python version is on the right and on the left is the AOZ version. As you can see, if you'd been using Python, you need to learn much more coding to handle things like creating screens, drawing graphics to the screen, managing the collision detection and physics, and the player's movement. And on the contrary, AOZ was designed to make development easy and accessible. So let's dive deep into the AOZ code, starting with the first line to initialize the game. Curse off simply turns off the blinking cursor and play audio music one plays background music. Note the semicolon to separate several instructions in the same line. In Python, the initialization is a bit more complicated. You need to import the Pygame library, initialize the mixer and load the music file before playing it. Back to our AOZ code. I have the locate and print instructions. This part of the code displays the text pixel runner on the screen at the position defined by locate, which is at x equals 32 and y equals 4. In Python, you have to use the Pygame library to create a screen, define fonts and text surfaces, and then blit them onto the screen. Next, I have the start label, which is used to position a point in a program that you can jump to with the go to instruction. You can choose any name for the label. In Python, a while loop is used to create a continuous game loop with a Boolean variable to keep track of whether the player wants to start a new game, which is also easily possible in AOZ. Below, I create an actor named intro with its set of properties. An actor is a graphical object that can be displayed on the screen. The X and Y properties specify the screen position and the image dollar sign property specifies the image to display in PNG or any other format. The scale property modifies the size of the image. In this case, I scale up an existing image by a factor of two to create the intro screen. In Python, I would first need to create a class for the intro actor, define its properties, and then create an instance of the class, which is a lot more work if you ask me. The next line is a wait input instruction which waits for any keyboard or mouse input before proceeding with the program and launching the game to play. In Python, I would need to use the Pygame event loop to constantly check for user input. Now in line six, I have a fully functional high score system. In order to save and recall data, you need to create a database. 
This can be difficult to learn and do when you're just starting to program, but in AOZ, we have simplified it for everyone by providing a set of simple instructions. But even though everything is managed by AOZ, you still have full control over everything. Here, I read the current highest score from the database using DB read best. The database will send us a value for the best variable, which will be stored to be used later. Then, if the current score is higher than the best score, I update it by showing this part, score greater than best, followed by best equals score, and save it back to the database using this line, db write best, so that it can be accessed later. And just like that, in one line, I have a basic high score system. In Python, I would have had to use a third-party library to create and manage an SQL database and program a very complex code of probably 60 lines by itself. I would rather not die. Next, at line 7, now that the high score is saved, I can reset it to zero before starting a new game and then clear the screen of all objects with CLS. Then at line 8, I print the current high score on the screen this line displays the current high score so that the player can try to beat it. Moving on to line 9, I have two actors named Sky and Ground. In these lines, I not only create them but also set their properties such as image, position, movement duration and loop behavior. The start x and end x properties specify the start and final position of the movement horizontally. In this case, the sky moves from left to right, starting at x equals 0, and ending at x equals minus 1600, which means the entire screen will disappear on the left-hand side. The Y property specifies the vertical position of the sky on the screen, which is 35 pixels from the top. The Duration property specifies the duration of the movement in milliseconds. Finally, the Loop Move property specifies whether the actor should loop back to its initial position after reaching its final position. In Python, I would need to create a class for the sky and the ground, define their properties, and then create an instance of the class, like this. Okay, now that I have the background for the game, I want to add our hero and three enemies, one snail and two flies. Otherwise, it would be the most boring game in the universe. So let's create these actors, each with their own animations. In line 11, I created the animations using the instructions that define the run animation for the hero, and for the enemies, the fly and snail animations. The L at the end of each animation is a short form of loop move equals true. It instructs the animation to loop. Then I created the four actors as before, but I added five more properties. First, the anim dollar sign property defines which animation the actor is using, for example, fly for the fly1 actor. Second, the group dollar property creates an enemy group with our three enemies, so I can manipulate them together, for example, to check for collisions between the hero and the enemies. Uh, we will see this later. Third, I control the player hero with the behavior dollar sign parameter, and here I use jump, which is one of the pre-programmed behaviors in AOZ. There are many more behaviors available. You can even control the gravity value to make our hero fall back down faster to the ground. Fourth, you can control the limit of the actor's movement on the screen automatically. Fifth, you can also change the default keys, which are the keyboard arrows, to other keys, such as O and P, to which I assign a movement in X of eight pixels each time I hit those keys. And now everyone, finally I am entering the main game loop using the compound instruction do and loop. Inside this loop, I basically do two things. I display the player's score at the top of the screen, and in the loop, it will be continuously refreshed and increased by one at each loop iteration, thanks to inc score. The inc stands for increase. Then I need to check for collisions between our player hero and the enemy actors, it's super easy to do this in AOZ, as easy as making a peanut butter sandwich with the actor call condition. Yummy! So once the check returns true, meaning the collision has been detected, I delete all the actors on the screen with actor del. Then play the boom sound effect from a preset, and then with go to, I tell the program to jump back to the start label in order to restart the game. And that's it! 
In just 20 lines of code, I have created a fully functional, simple game using AOZ Studio. Let's check it out. Yes, the game's not only recreated perfectly, but even has more awesome features like your high score using only a single line of code. There's no doubt that with AOZ, anyone can program almost anything they can imagine. Everything is ready and set up to go from the get-go, and anyone can immediately publish their game. Just hit the Publish button, and it transforms your AOZ code into JavaScript or HTML that runs immediately on any computer or smartphone. The button is here, and it will immediately generate a QR code that you can share with anyone to play on your PC or smartphone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new and exciting today. I'm extremely excited for what I can do in AOZ and for its future, and I'll be programming so hard that my fingers will burst into flames. So let's break the code!